Hey, what's up, Marauders? In this video, we're going to talk about dimensional analysis. So dimensional analysis is a problem-solving method where we include the units in every step of the problem. We make sure the units are canceling out along each step of the problem. And at the end, uh, we'll carry the units through and see what the final units are at the end. We're going to start with some pretty easy problems, but I want you guys to learn this method, and it'll help you throughout the entire year. You'll be able to solve some really complicated problems. Uh, if you get in the habit of always showing your work, including the units, and using this method for solving problems. So starting with this pretty easy one, we want to convert 8 inches into centimeters. And I know a lot of you guys can do that right away without really thinking about it much, but I want to show you guys how to set it up using dimensional analysis, and you'll see why as we get into some more challenging problems. So we're going to write down what we're starting with. We're starting with 8 inches, and we're going to include the units. I'm not just going to write 8, I'm going to write 8 inches. And then I'm going to multiply that by something, by a fraction. And this fraction is going to be what's called a conversion factor. And so this fraction is going to have the conversion factor that 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. And so when you're doing conversions like this, you may be unsure. Do I multiply by 2.54? Do I divide by 2.54? Setting up the problems like this will show you how to do it every single time. We've got inches up here in the numerator. We want them to cancel out. So the units that I have in the numerator on my next step, I need to go down here in the denominator so that they're going to be able to be canceled out. And the units that I want are going to go on the top. So it's always units that I have go on the bottom, that way they can be canceled out. And the units that I want will go on top. And then you look at your conversion factor and you find that 2.54 centimeters is equivalent to 1 inch. All right, so basically we're just multiplying by a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are equal to each other. And that means we're just multiplying by 1. We're not really changing the value. We're just converting the units. We have it set up correctly so that inches on top, inches on the bottom, they cancel out with each other. And then the units that we have at the end are centimeters. We can do this on our calculators. 8.0 times 2.54 divided by 1. You're always multiplying by everything that's on top of fractions, dividing by everything that's on the bottom. And when you do this, you get 20.32. We should include the units in our answer, centimeters. All right, the reason it's important to set up the question like this is if I did it incorrectly, 8.0 inches, maybe I'm going kind of fast and I do 2.54 centimeters and one inch on the top. Well, if I set it up like this, I can see pretty easily that inches don't cancel out with inches uh, and the units are not gonna make sense at the end, so I know that this is not correct. And by showing this work, you're gonna get the right answer pretty much every time. Let's look at another one. Uh, some of these problems take more than one step. So in this problem, it's going to take more than one step. We're trying to convert 17 centimeters into feet. So we'll start by writing out what we have, 17.0 centimeters. Again, I'm including the units in the problem. And then I want to convert centimeters into feet. So my next step, Okay, multiplying by a fraction, the units that I have go on the bottom, centimeters go here, and I might want to put feet up here at the top because that's the units that I want. Well, I'm not given, I don't really know a conversion factor that goes directly from uh, centimeters into feet. And you could look one up, but let's assume for a minute that you don't have that. You just have these to work with. Well, I do know how to convert centimeters into inches, so let's do that first. We'll put the inches here, centimeters on the bottom. There are 2.54 centimeters in every one inch. The centimeters are going to cancel out, and that'll give me inches. Okay, so we're closer to where we need to be. We need to be into feet. Let's do one more step. The units that I have on this step are going to go at the bottom of the next step. So inches down there. Feet will go on the top. Those are the units that I want. One foot is equal to 12 inches. One foot is equal to 12 inches. All right, I can check that I have it set up correctly because centimeters cancel out with centimeters. Inches cancel out with inches, and at the end, my units are going to be feet. I can type this into my calculator, so it's 17 times 1 divided by 2.54 times 1 divided by 12. It uh, doesn't matter what order you do it in. Obviously, multiplying and dividing by 1 doesn't change the value. Um, and when you do that on your calculator, you get 0.558, and the units will be feet. Without setting it up, it's going to be a little tougher to decide, should I multiply or should I divide? But if you set it up like this, you're going to get the right answer every time. Let's do another one. This one's a little bit different. This time we have 15.0 inches squared. 15.0 inches squared. 
So we've done some conversions already between inches and centimeters, but this time it's square inches, it's a unit of area. And so this time it's going to be a little bit different. Inches squared, what does that really mean? It really means when you square something, you're multiplying it by itself. So another way that I like to think about this would be 15.0 inches times inches. All right, well, if I think about it this way, let's do the conversion like we did it before. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters, so 2.54 centimeters is equivalent to one inch, all right? Uh, so inches cancel out with inches, and if I were to stop there, my units would be inches times centimeters. These didn't get canceled out. So what do I need to do? I need to do it one more time. All right, inches on the bottom again, centimeters on the top, 2.54 centimeters is equivalent to one inch. Uh, inches cancel out with inches. Now with the units that are left, centimeters times centimeters, which is centimeters squared. Do this on your calculator, and you get 96... 0.77 centimeters squared. Uh, density, so we'll do a little bit different type of problem here with density. So density of gold is 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed. That part's given to us. And then it says, what is the volume of five grams of gold? So we, have, we want to find out five grams of gold, uh, what would its volume be? Volume would be measured in centimeters cubed. So when we have the density here, it's what it's really telling us is that 19.3 grams is equal to one centimeter cubed. One centimeter cubed of gold equals 19.3 grams of gold. So we can use that density as kind of like a conversion factor. Uh, five grams of gold is what we're starting with. So we're starting with uh, 5.0 grams. And <clears throat> the units we have are grams, so they go down here. Units that I want, I want to get volume, which is measured in centimeters cubed. All right, and then from the density, 19.3 grams is equivalent to one centimeter cubed. All right, do we have it set up correctly? Grams cancel out with grams. Units we get at the end are centimeters cubed. On your calculator, 5.0 times one, divide by 19.3, and you get 0.259. Don't forget the units, centimeters cubed. All right, last problem. Uh, so this last problem, I think this came from, comes from chapter 20 in the book. So obviously at this point, we don't know much about uh, coulombs or moles or electrons. We don't know much about any of these things. But if we use the same problem solving method, we can probably solve problems that we, uh, that we don't really understand very well just by following the units, by setting up our problems, by making sure that all the units cancel out. So this problem says, how many grams of aluminum can be produced when a current of 4,500 coulombs is discharged? All right, so this is about electrochemistry. You don't understand all that yet, but let's solve the problem with these conversion factors. So what are we starting with? We're starting with 4,500 coulombs. All right, so our first step, we want to convert coulombs. So they go, units that you have, go on the bottom so that they're going to be able to be canceled out. Uh, what do we know about Coulombs? Well, we know that 96,500 96, Coulombs are equivalent to one mole of electrons. All right, so the Coulombs will cancel out, you'll get electrons. Next step, we have moles of electrons here. So we know moles of electrons need to go down there on the next step so that they'll be able to be canceled out. What can we convert moles of electrons into? Well, we've got a conversion factor right here. It's telling us three moles of electrons are equal to one mole of aluminum. Getting closer, the question's asking us about aluminum, so let's use that. We'll put moles of aluminum on the top. One mole of aluminum is equal to three moles of electrons. Elect moles of electrons will cancel out, and now we have moles of aluminum. We've got one more step to go, so we'll put moles of aluminum down here. And it says that up here that one mole of aluminum is equivalent to 27 grams of aluminum. So we'll put the grams on top. That's the units that we want, right? At the very beginning, it said how many grams of aluminum. So 27 grams of aluminum is equal to one mole of aluminum. All right, we can check that we have everything set up correctly. Uh, coulombs cancel out with coulombs. Moles of electrons cancel out with moles of electrons. 
moles of aluminum with moles of aluminum. And at the end, we get grams. Do that on our calculators, <clears throat> and we get 0.42 grams of aluminum.